This one is one of the application problem from the textbook Anthony Esposito, 7th edition, fully powered with the application. Um, so in this system, you have a reservoir and then this pump is pumping pressurized fluid and sending through this four-way directional valve to the blank end of the cylinder. So the flow is kind of going this way and pressurized fluid pressurizing this uh, to the right side and then it the flow returns this way and goes from there goes from there and go to the uh, reservoir and the flow comes this way this way this way and passes this four-way directional valve and then kind of go like that so the first question this uh, problem asks to find the uh, volumetric displacement of this pump so what is the uh, vd of this pump to find that we have to find the theoretical flow now uh, to find the theoretical flow we can find the actual flow we have the velocity of extension so uh, the extending of this piston and then we have the area of the piston so we can calculate the uh, flow from there so if you're thinking about this piston like this and then it is extending at a speed of uh, 3 inch per second and then we got fluid there so we can calculate the area of the piston so this will look like a cylinder so basically the velocity times this area will give us the flow so we can write Q actual will be area times the velocity so area is pi by 4 d square which is 8 inch in this case times the uh, speed which is 3 inch per second so if we solve this i found it 150.8 um, inch cube per second if i convert this to gallon per minute it is converted to 39 point uh, two gallon per minute so that's the actual flow rate now we know the actual flow rate then we can calculate the theoretical flow rate from the volumetric efficiency now the volumetric efficiency eta v is equal to the actual flow after all these slippers and leaks and then the theoretical flow which the pump should develop and pump should always develop less than that so if we just the volumetric efficiency is given 0.92 i think yes is equal to actual flow 39.29 um, in this case we can actually use the inch cube thing so we don't have to convert too many stuff so uh, 150.8 inch cube per second divided by the theoretical flow let me just circle this thing and also circle this piece so that's the flow too so this is this actual flow so here we can get qth is equal to i found it 163.9 inch cube per second so that's the theoretical flow now we know the theoretical flow so we can use that equation vd if it's in rep per sorry inch cube per rev and then rpm which is rep per minute so you can use this equation so let's uh, plug all these numbers 163.9 inch cube per second is equal to vd which is inch cube Per rev. rev is most of the time silent for volumetric displacement and then the rpm is given 1800 rep per minute now we have second on the left side minute on the right side we have to convert one of these let's convert it doesn't matter which one you do so let's cancel this minute to second so one minute is 60 second now if you solve for vd you get 54.46 inch cube so that's the value for the volumetric displacement so that's the answer to question number a question b is asking 
to find out the power I think so which is a little bit um, long I would say the hotspot required to drive this pump so uh, what's the power right here the input power of the pump P input find out that capital P is the power and then to find that um, we have to kind of back calculate everything so um, we need to find so we know that to calculate the power um, the equation for that is PQ P is in PSI times Q is in gallon per minute if that is the condition then divide by 1714 to find the horsepower of the system now we don't have the pressure uh, developed by this pump uh, so we have to kind of back calculate so we can find the pressure right here at the blank in p blank and then we can add this 75 uh, so there is a loss at this line in the from the pump to the cylinder was 75 psi frictional loss and in the return line you have about 50 psi loss so let's go to the next space so if I draw the cylinder right here and solve for forces to get the pressure so you have a back uh, the it is handling about 40,000 pounds and then you have a back press back force because of the return line pressure back pressure so because of the return pressure you have a force this way and then the the system is pressurizing this piece to handle this 40,000 loads so there will be a um, force because of the blank end pressure so if I solve for the summation of all these forces, x direction 0, this direction positive, so again the force in the blank and minus the 40,000 pounds load carrying minus the force back pressure force and everything sum to 0. So the blank end we can write P blank and then the blank end area which is pi by 4 d square 18 square minus 40,000 uh, pounds minus the return line uh, pre back pressure force the back pressure is given 50 psi so it's gonna be the pressure 50 psi pressure pound per square inch times the back pressure area so this is the area we are talking about which will be the piston area minus the rod area so pi by 4 d square minus 4 is square 4 is square 4 is the rod area so if we solve for the blank end pressure we get I got something like 833.3 psi so this is the blank end pressure now pressure right here at this point now this thing is connected to a pump through some four-way directional valve and other fittings so and then it says that so we need to find out the pressure right here and also there is a back pressure negative uh, 4 psi the pump is drawing fluid from a reservoir below its level so there is a vacuum pressure here so we got pressure at this point 833 psi and then here would be so you got 75 psi loss here is given in the problem so here it's gonna be 833.3 uh, plus 75 psi so basically the pump has to develop also this um, vacuum pressure because it's drawing fluid from below some level from the pump so the pump pressure developed by the pump and uh, the um, pressure p pump i would say 
it is basically that 833.3 plus 75 plus that four vacuum line pressure which is uh, i calculated total is uh, 912 912.3 probably should ignore that point three it's not really a big deal when you have 900 psi pressure now let's calculate the uh, power output by the pump so we have the um, power we have the pressure which is 912.3 i'll probably forget that just this psi and then q was uh, 39.2 gallon per minute then the press pump uh, power would be p if it's in psi and q is in uh, gallon per minute then 1714 will give us the horsepower so 912 times 32 39.2 divided by 1714 so i found that output power this is basically output by the pump which is uh, 20.86 horsepower now we can calculate the input power that was the question how much is the you know the pump has to develop so that would be the input power this is the delivery of the pump so the efficiency overall efficiency is the volumetric efficiency times the mechanical efficiency we can also do that the power output by the power input so we have uh, volumetric efficiency given 0.92 the mechanical efficiency given 0.9 and then we got the output power calculated 820.86 horsepower divided by input power so input power i calculated 25.2 horsepower so that's the answer to question number um, b now let's answer question number c i think it's the uh, torque required to drive the pump so you have this pump we know input output power everything so pump right here we know the power is 25.2 horsepower so we know power here is not really necessary for this problem we know that power equal to tn divided by 5250 so we got 25.2 horsepower is equal to t times 1800 rpm divided by that factor so the torque i have calculated is um, 73.5 pound feet of torque so that's the torque And then the next question, this is the answer to question number, um, answer to question number C. The next question, let's solve it to the next one. So next question is the um, percentage of power transferred to the, um, so you got this pump developing about 25.2 horsepower and this thing is sent to the cylinder so that it can do some work so it says what's the percentage transfer from here to there so percentage of power transfer one of the thing confused with that is the efficiency of the cylinder well, that's not a correct wording the correct wording should be what is the percentage of power transfer to the work if you have a car that is a 500 horsepower sitting and not moving it's not transferring any power it just have 500 powers to use but it's not transferring anything anyway so you have that 25 um, horsepower so we can calculate how much it is transfer we know the velocity v was three inch per second which is um, if i convert that to foot that's gonna be uh, one foot is 12 inches so that's gonna be basically point 
to five i guess feet per second just trying to do it in my brain so and then it's it's moving forty thousand pounds load so you can simply calculate the power is equal to fv by 550 horsepower clock coming in horsepower so which is forty thousand pounds times 0.25 feet per second and that's gonna be uh, 550 so the total horsepower i calculated 18.18 horsepower that was taken by the cylinder so the percentage transfer would be 18.18 horsepower divided by 25.2 horsepower which is uh, 72 percent transfer so that is the percentage of transfer um, percentage of p transfer to the actual work is 72 percent that's the answer to question number d i think i think that's all for this problem